With gratitude, we come to you, O oh God, as we begin uh, this Bible study, giving you thanks for not only this day, but for your grace and love for us in Jesus Christ. It is the reason why we're here. And so we pray that as we study Psalm 31 this morning together in this group, um, you'll open our eyes by the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to what it means to be faithful. What it means to be faithful when times are really rough and we get down and depressed and blue. Um, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In her essay, A Journey Through Darkness, Daphne Merkin wrote of her own experience with depression. Depression, the thick black paste of it, I like that. The muck of bleakness was nothing new to me. I had been battled with it in some way or another since childhood. It is an affliction that often starts young and goes unheeded. All the same, who knows that I was already adopting the mask of rightness that every depressed person learns to wear in order to navigate this world. Depression. In any given year, 7% of adults or roughly 21 million Americans suffer from depression. According to the World Health Organization, depression is the leading cause of disability globally. Depression, the muck of bleakness, no hope, much despair. Depression doubts that God cares. Psalm 31, however, has something different to say. Something important to say about the life of the believer who is in distress or in anguish or in depression. Trust in the Lord no matter what. So I'm going to read Psalm 31 now. So let us hear the word of the Lord. The psalmist wrote, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your, right, your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. I like that. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But... I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. 
how great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's an unusual characteristic of this psalm, in case you, you haven't noticed, that you don't often see is it contains um, two parts or two waves of depression to assurance, the move from depression to um, assurance. See, that's better. I changed it from last week. Notice how it all appeared? <laughs> um, look at verses, you see verses 1 through 8, and then verses 9 through 24. So that's the move from depression to assurance, not once, but two times. Psalm 31 can be described as a individual lament. Last week we looked at, you know, it was like a nation lament. Today it's individual. This is a little more personal. Um, or a song of the night, as it's often, often referred to. We hear and see the desperate situation of the psalmist, especially in verses 9 through 18. Not only does the psalmist's dep depression affect him emotionally, it affects him physically and socially. So you see the, um, the, the descriptions using the body, uh, uh, parts of the body to describe how the depression has affected him. Uh, at one point, the psalmist's anguish and depression shift into complaints that his enemies are scheming to kill him. But we also see, we also see the goodness or the presence of good news. Trust in the Lord. We are reminded of God's goodness, love, and hope. There's a few points I want to make about this psalm that relate to um, depression. And the first one is, you can learn to live with your depression. Depression touches all people, whether we want to admit it or, or not. We experience it in our lives. Take, for example, Abraham Lincoln. People were excited when Lincoln came to the stage in the 1860 State Republican Convention in Decatur, Illinois crowd roared with approval. People were excited. Men were, I think they were throwing up their canes in there along with their hats. They were thrilled to hear Lincoln speak. But to the crowd, Lincoln didn't look too pleased. On the contrary, said a man named Johnson observing from the floor, I then thought him one of the most diffident and worst plagued men I ever saw. Lincoln believed that he was stricken with melancholy or depression. He often wept in public. He told jokes and stories so that he would laugh. He had to. He didn't have any choice. It was necessary for his survival. His law partner, William Herndon, said his melancholy dripped from him as he walked. Other people, take Luther, Martin Luther, or Jeremiah. So one of these verses in here, Jeremiah was just was, uh, uh, afraid of. The Apostle Paul, or even Jesus, and his moment in the Garden of Gethsemane when he, was, when he was praying in deep anguish 
and, and depression. So depression touched the psalmist. Back to the psalm, verses 9 through 13. In verses 9 through 13, the psalmist gets a little more specific about his suffering. It includes his eyes, his soul, its bo his body. It's personal. Notice the I language. Do you see that? It's very personal. It's likely this anguish or depression has been going on for years, perhaps even a lifetime. However, in verses 11 through 13, the psalmist's suffering shifts into they complaints. They complaints. He has heard that his enemies are planning to uh, kill him. The second point is that, like last week, I said it's okay to complain, and it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm almost tempted to ask you, if you took me literally and you opened up the, uh, the, you know, the floodgates this week. If so, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'd be glad to hear that. Well, likewise, it's okay to feel blue or bad sometimes. We don't like it, but it is, it is okay. And furthermore, you're in great company if you do. I've just mentioned some of the people who struggle, and there's a lot more. Um, if you did your research, and uh, you discover there's a lot of famous people who struggle and suffer with, with depression. One comfort we can take when we're depressed is that we can find solace, we can find comfort and encouragement that we're not alone. There's a great, there's a great reason why um, I chose, if, if John or Ruthie asked me to read the Psalms, is I like the emotions that are expressed in the Psalms. And they go from one end of the spectrum um, to the other. It's a wide spectrum. And the reminder the psalmist gives us that we're never alone when we're in these types of situations. We are not alone. So if you ever want to read the Bible from stem to stern, beginning to the end, I encourage you don't begin with Genesis, like a lot of people do. With that point in mind, begin with the Psalms. Read the Psalms first, and then go back to Genesis. And see how you read the Bible. I, I guarantee you it will deepen your, your experience. Note that in verses 14 through 15, the psalmist, there's a big shift in, in the psalm. He expresses his faith and begins with the conjunction, but. Someone said, I don't remember who, maybe it was uh, um, the message, help me, uh, or Peterson, Eugene, I think Peterson said this, but don't quote me on this. But is the beginning of the gospel, the conjunction, but. But I trust in you, Lord. My times are in your hands. There's a theme going through this psalm, if you notice, about the hands. The enemy's hands versus the Lord's hands. My time into your hands, I commit, uh, I commit uh, my spirit. And we'll say more about that in a moment. Third, cultivate a perspective on your depression. We need to remember that God is our refuge. It's a, a reminder again and again. How many times does the psalmist talk about refuge? Many times. Many times. So in the midst of our darkest soul of the night, when the muck of bleakness sets in, and we remember when there is no light, there is a hand. There's a strong hand to guide you through your depression. That's an echo I hear in Psalm 23. Are you with me? God is our safe and secure place, our shelter. After putting himself in God's hands, the psalmist remembers that the Lord has faithfully delivered him 
from, from his enemies. And I, I love it. I said this when I was reading. I love this. Into a broad, wide place. As if when we're in our dark place, or depression, or whatever you want to call it, it's confining. It's not a big, broad, airy, light place. And that place is a place of safety and security. So God's presence brings safety and security to the psalmist in his darkest gloom and holds him safe. Now, I've sort of mentioned this as I've gone along. Um, there are different types of depression. You know that. Uh, and the causes are very complex. And I'm not just addressing the most serious kind of depression here. There's situational depression. I mean, for instance, when your kid goes to college. Now, that may be a time of joy, too. Um, but you know, you know, it's, um, I don't know, what is it? Almost October? And I'm already starting to think about it, and it's a year from now. You know, so how am I going to feel? Hmm. So that's situational. There's spiritual, there's psychological, there's physiological issues. A lot of things in life can cause depression. So if you're struggling with depression, by, by all means, get some help. But while you're doing that, don't forget to sing this song. I, I think it's one of the most powerful things about the Psalms. It's, it's, it's all... You notice we, we talk, we describe them as a song of the night or a song of praise or et cetera, et cetera, so on. Um, singing praises to God is very therapeutic. For example, and I'm not going to sing to you. Yeah. Did he really? Well, they set an example I, I, that I, I probably can't reach, so, but I'm going to point you in the right direction. You know, I looked in our red hymnal, and those of you who have read it longer than I have, I looked for this hymn and I didn't see it, but so I was desperate to grab it. So I, I grabbed the blue one, or the new one, and the, which is not really the new one, but um, there's a balm in Gilead. There's a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. That's what the balm in Gilead is all about. That's what this hymn is all about, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives that does revive our souls, don't ever feel discouraged, for Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to lend. And if you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. The balm of Gilead, the Holy Spirit, renews us, revives us when we're down on ourselves, when we feel like failures, when... We feel like the world's falling apart when, uh, all around us and we feel alone and we don't meet someone's expectations or we let someone down. The Holy Spirit gives us hope. And Christ sings this song with us and lifts us out of the darkness and gloom of our depression into the light of his love. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the balm of Gilead in our lives that speaks our words, that breathes, that gives us breath to breathe. But most importantly, when, when we're down, when we're discouraged, when things seem hopeless, that balm shows up, balm of Gilead. So come, Holy Spirit. Lift all of us when we are down and blue and lift us into the light and joy of your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.